Hello, this is Paul Campbell from HCNCWorkshops.com. Today we're going to be doing the first in a series of five videos introducing you to the Genmitsu MX3 3018 CNC router by SaneSmart. What's different about this router to the other smaller uh, desktop type of routers that you're seeing coming out on the market is this one is powered by Mark III control software, which is a more sophisticated and common software used by a lot of people that uh, get into hobby CNC and also some semi and professional uh, situations as well. But uh, usually these small uh, desktop CNC's use a thing called GRBL. What GRBL is is something that was developed uh, by some programmers for the use with an Arduino driver which is a type of electronics that you can buy inexpensively and has become uh, really commonly used by a lot of people and we, we'll talk about that in another video but uh, Mark III is, uh, is the software on this machine which is pretty cool so we're going to first of all unbox the machine and uh, I think I'm going to switch to an overhead camera for that one. So see you in a minute. Okay, well, welcome to the unboxing. Right, knife. Now I'm just going to do this off the cuff so what you see is what you get. This box has not been opened before so we don't know what surprises we're in for. But uh, let's, let's have a go. So it comes actually, you know, Seems to be nicely uh, packed. Box cutter here. Open the first box. Alrighty, it looks like we've got some uh, some packing materials there. And actually, appears that they've double boxed the uh, the product. So we've got a little bit smaller box here. It's a fairly weighty little box. Alrighty, so first look. Okay, so there's some foam here, and it appears that. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Alrighty, so everything seems to be packed in this sort of a foam, which is which is pretty cool. Bearings, and you know something. This is some sort of a polyethylene or. Fiber. It feels fairly rigid though and fairly solid. This just looks like uh, this looks like something like 2020 aluminum. The uh, bearing holders, I'm just going to pop one of these out here because I'd like to check something here. Yeah, okay, so looking at this actually the bearing holders on this machine look different than others I've seen because a lot of the other ones I've seen they're actually 3D printed. These look as though they've been injection molded, which is pretty cool. So this machine's been purposefully built. It hasn't just been made from off-the-shelf parts, which is pretty neat. Okay, so we're looking in here. This is the lead screws, some power supplies, USB cable. Wow, they even give us a screwdriver and some tools. A couple of more parts for the machine. And then once again, we've got another I probably should have opened this up the other way by the look of things because it seems to be all upside down. Alrighty, so again this is the uh, Z and looking at this again this does not appear to be 3D printed. So it's, this looks like it's been uh, injection molded and uh, it's been fairly well designed actually. The limit switches have, uh, have been thought about in the actual design itself, not an afterthought. And uh, it looks fairly nice, actually. I'm, I'm quite impressed so far because uh, because I'm not seeing 3D printed parts. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but I've noticed that when I've used others that have had 3D printed parts, that I sometimes those parts fail. Motor, hardware, and again, nicely nicely packaged. I mean, everything's in in, in uh, little boxes here. Belts, or is that belts, or is that cabling? That's, a, that's a, some, sort of, some sort of a belt, or a, I'm not too sure what that is. 
little uh, CD. Something really cool. This is a Z-height uh, 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 mechanism where your, your machine's bit comes down and, and uh, touches this and auto zeroes the uh, Z-axis. They've put in some, uh, some pretty cool little bits. In fact, from what I see there, quite a few. So again, pretty impressed with that. So if we flip this upside down, Okay, so I can see the power supply. It looks like here the uh, the motherboard, which is the Mark III controller. And again, this looks like a purpose-built board for this particular machine, which is also pretty impressive. Okay, let's have a let's have a look and see what else we've got down in here. Ooh, there's a little part there. Keep that out. Instruction manual. Let's have a quick look at this instruction manual. Okay, so it's got a parts list. A lot of these machines you don't see instruction manuals like this. They they'll arrive in a box and uh, you're left to your own devices. But uh, Saint Smart have have done pretty well here to provide a uh, a nice little instruction guide that has a pretty good packing list. Just quickly flip through that. Okay, mechanical installation, mechanical installation. So it's basically got an assembly guide. We're going to be doing another another video with uh, with an assembly uh, of this, probably a, a time lapse or something like that, because there is other videos out there on the same smart website. In fact, uh, on how to assemble it, but we'll do it. We'll do a a, a a time lapse video for that. So just moving through this again. Just want to get back. What I'm interested in here is, is is there any software installation information because that's going to be important. So we've got some con introduction to the control card. Uh, Mark three description, control card introduction, installation of Mark three. Actually, there's a fairly extensive little uh, introduction here to how to set this up with Mark three. I am not sure that they've included anything about setting up the laser attachment but we'll get to that when that video comes but they do give some examples so with the spindle at least uh, which which is uh, you know out of the box with this machine uh, looks like you've got a fairly comprehensive little guide here to help you get through the process nice sturdy aluminum table Thank you card and looks like uh, this is it's a warranty and uh, the panels for uh, each side of the machine that that uh, make it more safe and I guess that's it for this box so I'm going to quickly put some of this stuff back in here and we're going to move on to the laser attachment, which we'll unbox in this video as well. And then we will be done for the unboxing and we will be moving on to part two video, which is going to be assembly. This does look like a nice little machine though. I mean, I'll, I'm going to do some other reviews on on uh, on some of the uh, other types of machines that are similar to this out there that use 3D printed parts. I mean, they're not bad little machines, but I'm impressed by the uh, work that Sane Smart has done with this particular machine. Okay, so we'll move this box aside here, and this is the 5.5 watt laser attachment, so that you can uh, you can. Uh, once you assemble this machine, you can use a spindle and you can use a laser. The cool thing about that is, is with the spindle you can cut thicker materials than you would be able to do with a 5 watt laser comfortably. But one of the interesting things is there's a lot of people out there that want to do this. They want to do hybrid stuff where you have perhaps a little HO scale uh, model uh, railway building and that's going to have some engraving on it, say for the roof tiles on the building. and uh, when you want to engrave that, you can use the laser. And then when you want to cut the parts, you can use the router and the spindle. So you get dual purpose there. You can have laser engraved details and then uh, the thicker materials cut like, you know, one sixteenth of an inch, uh, one sixteenth of an inch plywood or something like that. I'm not saying that the laser can't cut, but uh, the laser's probably best 
for engraving at 5.5 watts. And you know, those of you that have used K40 lasers and stuff will know. But anyway, let's have a little look at this laser attachment and see what comes with. Right, first thing, safety glasses. That is really cool because you do not want to damage your eyes. In fact, I would, uh, I would think about building a little protective box around this machine if you're going to use it a lot for laser. You don't want laser beams reflecting into places they shouldn't be. And then here is the laser itself. It looks like with its little controller board and power supply. Ah, a software CD. That will be interesting when it comes time to get this powered up with Mark III because the G-Code power supply, and it looks like uh, a power adapters for various uh, other countries. Okay, so just quickly, yeah, when you, you use a laser with Mark III, you're going to have to be able to turn the laser on and off. And that's usually done using what they call M codes. So if you're using a piece of software uh, to create the G code, so you draw a circle and you want to, uh, and, and a square, and you want to uh, engrave that circle but cut out the square. So you need to be able to turn the laser off when it, uh, after it's finished cutting the circle and moves over to cut out the, sorry, engraving the circle and moves over to cut out the square because otherwise you'll have a line going across, right? Well, in G-Code, like if you're using Mark III, those on and off uh, switches for the laser are controlled by M codes. Now, when you're using a CNC uh, piece of software, for instance, like Vetric, various companies with their electronics have various types of things called post processors, which set up the G-Code for that specific piece of electronics to control it. So, and I think I'm on to one for Mark III for this machine, but I'll talk about that more in a video because I'm not sure I am yet. I've got to build this machine, assemble it, and get it all up and running and do the test video for you. But once I've done that, it's going to be a bit of fun going through the process, but I'm sure by the end of it, we will know how to use this machine. We will know how to use the laser with the machine. We'll know how to generate G-code with the machine, and we'll also make a couple of little HO scale railway buildings. So thank you for watching the unboxing, and we will be back to you in the very next video. Don't miss out. Bye for now.